In this video, I'm going to be talking about a cart being pulled by a hanging mass. The first thing we're going to solve for is the acceleration and then the tension. And then we're going to take a look at a second scenario. We're going to solve for an unknown mass that's sitting on top of the cart. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and draw our forces on each of the objects and then define a system before we set up some equations and then get calculating with some numbers. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the cart. And for the cart, we just are gonna assume that, that the friction force is small enough to where we can just go ahead and ignore it. If you wanna see a case where the friction is significant, go ahead and click on the cart above. But for this scenario, um, we're not too concerned about the force of gravity and the normal force. Um, these two are gonna be equal and opposite. They're gonna cancel each other out. And it's not along the axis of the direction that the cart is moving. So we have the FT, which is the net force, which means that it equals M times A. So before I write in 500 grams for the M, I want to make sure I convert it into kilograms. So I'm going to divide it by 1,000, which would make it 0 0.5 kilograms times acceleration. And then that's the only formula I'm going to need for my cart. And then for my hanging mass, um, it has an FG and then it has an FT. Now, before we get going with that, um, one thing we have to keep in mind is when we have pulleys, it can kind of affect the positive and negative values. And what I mean by that is we have a system over here where a cart is being pulled and then the pulley redirects the force from this hanging mass and then goes downwards. So everything in the direction of the acceleration for the cart and the hanging mass would be considered positive. So typically you would say to the right is positive and to the left is negative, which does hold up for the cart. Over here, a lot of times we would say downward is negative and then upward is positive. So that's gonna be a little bit different. So we're saying everything along the direction of the acceleration for both of the objects involved is going to be positive. So when I write my equation, I'm gonna say Fg minus ft and i'm going to make my ft my negative and then i'm going to set that equal to m times a two kilograms times that a right there and then for our entire system so our entire system is the part that i circled in purple we only have one force that's an external force that contributes to the acceleration of the system. So things that are internal forces aren't going to affect the acceleration. So these are inside of my purple system. So my FTs don't matter. And my FN and my FG, they're going to cancel each other out anyways. So this FG is the only contributing factor to the acceleration of the system. So I'm going to go ahead and write FG equals m times a for the whole system so the whole system is going to be 2.5 kilograms all right so i have a set of three different formulas and the first thing i want to do is solve for acceleration and if i take a look at what i have uh, i don't have enough t yet i don't have the a uh, for my fg i do have the fg which is just two times 9.8 mg and that gives us 19.6 um, i don't have ft because that's the same ft as that one and i don't have my a so i'm going to go to my last one uh, my purple formula and then this fg is the same as this one over here which is the force of gravity on the two kilogram mass uh, this one i do know everything except the a which means i can go ahead and solve for my a with a little bit of algebra
All right, so I went ahead and solved for my acceleration. I got 7.84 meters per second squared, um, which was pretty large for this kind of setup, um, but we do have a two kilogram mass hanging off the edge, so that acceleration is gonna be pretty large. So we found our acceleration, and the second thing we're gonna solve for um, is our tension. And for our tension, we have two formulas which we can utilize. We have one up here and we have one over here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use this one over here because this one looks a little bit more simple. So I know my acceleration is 7.84. So if I go ahead and plug in the 7.84 over here, then my force of tension is 0 0.5 times 7.84 meters per second squared, which is the acceleration I just solved for. And then my force of tension comes out to be 3.92 newtons. So I finished the first portion of the video, which is solving for the acceleration and the tension. And for the second part of the video, we aren't gonna need this. For our second problem, what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for an unknown mass that's sitting on top of our cart. So say for example, we have a mass that's placed on top of the cart and we're trying to solve for that unknown mass based on some values that we're gonna be finding in the lab and by doing some calculations. So what you would typically do is you would use a motion detector and with that motion detector, you would take a look at your velocity versus time graph and you would get something that looks like this because you have a uniform positive acceleration. And let's just pretend that the slope of our line is five meters per second squared. Okay, then we would have our acceleration. So the first part of our video, we already saw for the acceleration uh, mathematically. So this scenario would be a little bit different, especially since there's more mass on top of the cart, our acceleration and our tension aren't gonna be the same. So if we know our acceleration, well, if there's an additional mass on top of this, we're gonna have to rewrite some of our formula. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so I rewrote my red, blue, and purple formula. Uh, my red one was just rewritten to include the unknown mass that is stacked on top of the 0.5 kilogram uh, cart. Uh, my blue formula stayed the same because it doesn't involve this cart. It only in involves just the hanging mass. So this still looks the same. And then for my purple formula, which is the entire system, um, that one is slightly different because it is that 2.5 kilograms, which is the hanging mass and the cart and then plus an additional unknown mass. So what we can do is we can find that unknown mass by taking a look at what we have. We have two unknowns over here. We have one unknown over here, which is our FT. So we can go ahead and find FT if we wanted to. And then we have our unknown mass right over here. Um, so we can go ahead and solve for our mass over here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so what I did is I just distributed the five to the 2.5 and then the M. So I got 12.5 plus five times M, subtracted the 12.5 from both sides and then finish off by dividing by five. And that unknown mass that's sitting on top of the cart ends up being 1.42 kilograms. So we are done with that problem. If we wanted to find the FT, the FT doesn't look that difficult in this case. We already saw a setup over here where the FT is our only unknown. 
So we have um, two times five, which is 10, subtract it from both sides, which would make the 19.6, 9.6, that FT would be added to the other side. So then we would have an FT of 9.6 Newtons. We could have also found that same FT by using our red formula over here, which wasn't really necessary, but if you wanted to, you could have took this M, that 1.42, Put in over here 1.42 plus 0.5 is 1.92 and then 1.92 times 5 you would still get 9.6 newtons so i hope that was helpful in helping you solve for acceleration tension and an unknown mass on top of a cart thank you for watching and listening